There will be four free response questions on the AP exam. This video is modeled after FRQ number three. It's about modeling real life situations using a sine function or a cosine function. Let's pretend it's from the 2019 exam. If you appreciate this content, please give it a like. The figure shows a large clock mounted to a vertical wall. The clock has an eight inch long moving minute hand. The center of the clock is 120 inches directly above the floor. At time t equals zero minutes, the minute hand is pointed directly up at the 12. However, the clock is not working properly and the minute hand is moving twice as fast as it should. Thus, the next time the minute hand points directly up to the 12 is at time t equals 30 minutes. As the minute hand moves, the distance between the end point of the minute hand and the floor periodically decreases and increases. The periodic function h models the distance in inches between the end point of the minute hand from the floor and the floor as a function of time t in minutes. Part a, the graph of h and its dashed midline for two full cycles is shown. Five points, f, g, j, k, and p are labeled on the graph. No scale is indicated and no axes are presented. Determine the possible coordinates of t, comma, h of t for the five points f, g, j, k, and p. Let's start by building a vertical scale. We are told that the center of the clock is 120 inches above the floor. So this mark right here represents the height of the center. So this is 120 inches. The clock has an eight inch long minute hand. That means the highest point reached by the end point of the minute hand will be eight inches more than the midline. So 128. Similarly, the lowest point reached by the minute hand will be eight inches below 120. So this will be 112. Transferring this vertical scale onto our graph of h of t, we now have the output coordinates for each of the five points. Now let's see if we can find the input coordinates. At time t equals zero, the minute hand is pointed directly up at the 12. So t equals zero should be at one of the high points. Let's pick this point right here and call it t equals zero. We can find the other four input coordinates using the period. The next time the minute hand points directly up to the 12 is at time t equals 30. That means this point right here must be t equals 30. Half of that will be t equals 15. So that's right here. Half of that again is 7.5. So this must be t equals 7.5. 15 plus 7.5 is 22.5. Now that we have all of the input coordinates and the output coordinates, we can begin to list all of the coordinates for each of the five points. Point F is at 0, 128. Point G is at 7.5, 120. Point J is at 15, 112. Point K is at 22.5 comma 120 and point P is at 30 comma 128. Part B, the function H can be written in the form H of T equals A times the sine of B times T plus C plus D. Find the values of the constants A, B, C, and D. Hopefully you have memorized what the parent functions sine t and cosine t look like. Notice that the cosine t function starts at its highest value, falls to its lowest value, and then ends at its highest value again. However, h of t is the image of sine t after these four transformations. So when we trace one period of h of t, we are really tracing one period of a sine function. So we are going to start at the midline and then go up and then down to the lowest value and then back to the midline. 
just like this. We can find the values of a, b, c, and d by comparing the graph of h of t to the graph of the parent function. Let's build an expression for h of t, filling in the values of a, b, c, and d as we go along. The a value is the vertical dilation compared to the parent function. Notice that the distance from the midline to the maximum value is 1 on the parent function. Now, that same distance from the midline to the maximum value on the graph of h of t is 8. This vertical dilation by a factor of 8 means that the a value is 8. In the context of periodic functions, this is called the amplitude. I want you to memorize that the b value is given by this little formula, 2 pi divided by the period. In this case, we are told that it takes 30 minutes from high point to high point. So the period is 30. Therefore, the b value will be 2 pi divided by 30. And this reduces down to pi over 15. So we can fill in the b value of pi over 15 right here. In unit 1, we learned that the c value is the opposite of the horizontal translation. Notice that the parent function starts at t equals 0. Looking at the graph of h of t, this period of h of t does not start at t equals 0. Instead, it is shifted one quarter period to the left. We haven't labeled this yet, but one quarter period to the right was 7.5. Therefore, one quarter period to the left is negative 7.5. But again, the C value is the opposite of the phase shift. Because we do have a phase shift of negative 7.5, that means the value of C is positive 7.5. I have been using this phrase. Notice that in the context of periodic functions, it's called a phase shift instead of a horizontal translation. Finally, the value of d is the vertical translation of a graph compared to the parent function. Notice that the parent function has a midline output value of 0, whereas h of t has a midline output value of 120. So that is a vertical translation of 120, therefore the value of d is 120. For sinusoidal functions, the value of d will simply be the output value of the midline. On the AP exam, they will give you an answer box, and you are welcome to use it to record the values of a, b, c, and d like this. Or you can leave the answer box blank and record your answer as an expression for h of t with the values of a, b, c, and d filled in, like this. Part c. Refer to the graph of h in part a. The t-coordinate of g is t1, and the t-coordinate of j is t2. In this case, t1 is 7.5, and t2 is 15. c. Part 1. On the interval from t1 to t2, which of the following is true about h? Is h positive and increasing? Is it positive and decreasing? Is h negative and increasing? Or is h negative and decreasing? First of all, is h positive or negative on this interval? Well, look at these output values. The output values are between 112 and 120, so they are certainly positive. We can easily see that h of t is decreasing from t1 to t2 because we can see how the output values are falling from left to right on this interval. So, h of t is positive and decreasing on this interval. So the answer is b. C part 2. Describe how the rate of change of h is changing on the interval from t1 to t2. In unit 1, we learn that wherever h of t is concave up, the rate of change is increasing, and wherever h of t is concave down, the rate of change is decreasing. 
we can see that h of t is concave up on this interval. Therefore, the rate of change is increasing. Since we were not asked to explain our reasoning, it's safest to answer with a single word. Just say increasing. Part D. Find the period, frequency, amplitude, and midline for the graph of H. In the setup, we were told that the minute hand starts off pointing at the 12, and it takes 30 minutes to go all the way around and come back to pointing at the 12 again. So that's the period, 30 minutes. What about the amplitude? The amplitude is the distance from the midline to the highest value. It is always positive, and in this case the amplitude is 8. I didn't mean to skip the frequency, which is the reciprocal of the period. Since the period is 30 minutes, the frequency is 1 over 30 cycles per minute. Now, what about the midline? The midline will be given as the equation of a horizontal line. So we will say y equals 120. Part E. Find two intervals for which the graph of h is both decreasing and concave up. We are looking for intervals where h of t is decreasing and concave up. Let's start with decreasing. h of t is decreasing on this interval and also on this interval. First interval of decreasing. h of t goes from concave down to concave up at t equals 7.5. So h of t is concave up and decreasing on this interval from 7.5 to 15. Similarly, uh, we don't have these t values numbered yet, but h of t will be concave up and decreasing on this interval right here. Every quarter of a period is 7.5. So let's add 7.5 to 30 to get this t value, which will be 37.5. We need to add 7.5 again to get this t value. So two intervals where h of t is concave up and decreasing are the interval from 7.5 to 15, and the interval from 37.5 to 45. And that's it for 2019 Practice FRQ3. Hey guys, don't forget to like and subscribe, but also if you found this video helpful, there's a lot more where that came from. You can click the upper link, which will take you to the whole unit playlist, or you can click the lower link, which will take you to the next video in the playlist. See you there.